Hi everyone, I hope you're doing really well. This tutorial is coming to you a little bit on the late side and I apologise for that. As you can probably imagine, with everything that has been going on the last week since my last one, um, it's been a little bit overwhelming. So I apologise for the lateness, but I am hoping that you've all been practising this part and enjoying yourself practising it, enjoying watching the um, video that we recorded for you all and um, that there was enough to condense out of the previous tutorial which was I think quite dense, quite filled with stuff. Um, what I'm going to do today rather than uh, teach you a lot more that is specific or violinistic, what I'm actually going to do is focus on the things that we would love to hear the most of when receiving the tapes of the Tchaikovsky. Um, I am looking most for, uh, when we add your sound to ours, that it, it colours in what we've already done. So it's like you're bringing to the forefront extra character to everything. So, uh, of course, that that exists in your heart and in your imagination, but it exists in sound production and articulation, too. And I would like to really encourage everyone to get deep into the mindset of how can I create vivid colours and extremes as sincerely as possible. Now, um, I think this piece is ideal for this kind of thing because there are such clear cut sections that have a totally, totally different feel. So let's say if the way I recorded this beginning was a little safe. Um, what would I want that is more a more like a deeper version of what that character is it's anxious it's mischievous it's um like we're scurrying somewhere like we're chasing something it's got that kind of um unsettled quality to it so i would look for even more of sounded sort of ridiculous but meaning um everything that is like a little spark of something that's like, like this um that brings that intensity to the fore it brings that intensity to the edge so we're not comfortable i think i mentioned that many times in the last tutorial that we do not want to be comfortable almost at any point other than But even there we have bum -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da bum -ba -da -ba -da. So even there we're not really comfortable. It's like you've constantly got stuff going on underneath you. Um, so I would say obviously the, the physical and technical manifestations for that um, excitement and kind of anticipation in the sound, I would say generally go for a slightly faster vibrato, an excitable vibrato that the sound should not be too kind of flabby and relaxed. So... So we've got that kind of like compactness, never too much bow. Um, and yet in the left hand... that you've constantly, you're constantly alive. So it's almost like somebody's put an electric shock into your left hand. It's constantly um, trying to kind of color and bring that excitement with things. Then when it comes to any spiccato stroke, I think we could actually do with even more, we could, we could do with a little bit, I don't want to say roughness because so much of the spiccato strokes are in a, in a smaller dynamic, in a lesser dynamic, but we want, we do want, rather than we don't want anything that's sounding too relaxed and um, I apologize to everyone I have a 
slightly noisy pigeon outside of the window that's just not leaving no matter what I do. So um, here, that sparky quality. And then here, the whole time you've got that extreme energy i can't explain it other any other way other than like you're constantly having a bit of an electric shock and that nothing is flabby whatsoever now to help us with letter b and other places like that also the fugue we want you to have kind of the most dense disciplined thick sound so i'm always looking at like angles and stuff like i mean I'm not always looking at angles because I'm often playing at all sorts of different angles. Don't follow me in that regard. Um, I'm often trying to address so it's that really like you practice that in a way that's got that real um, it's kind of like a harshness to it and you're trying to find that. actually quite straight right now. Amazing. Oh no it's not. So the vibrato comes from inside. You see that so the sound is created, it's got that that um like meatiness and dense density density to it first and then the vibrato um colours that. Absolute opposite sound had <laughs> showing you I mean obviously the dynamic is is high but that theme where it's written in the register everything just shoots absolutely soars above so like I was playing that without vibrato just to show you that hopefully to show you that you can have search and quality without relying on vibrato so I cheated there slightly I actually used a bit of vibrato I'm gonna do it again without um first with the right hand so that the sound itself and the sound production itself has this like like where are we going with the sound and you're leaving all the space for the drum but actually when it comes down to it we are back to the same theme of what this whole video is about how can you add more intensity more excitement and more clarity to what we've already done you don't need to add more like box ticking so um Give us as much of your heart as you can possibly stand. So here's a place where I felt like in the recording we are a little bit um, tame, which is at D. So in the concerts we would usually play, like we'd absolutely go for that. And you rely on the fact that there's some distance between the scratch that you make and what people hear. And we have like a um, like a drama to that place, but I feel like we all recorded it a little bit safe. Like, actually, you know what I remember doing is first of all recording it really with a lot of intensity, and then I went back and recorded it much more clean to make it easier for people to follow and just to make the sound cleaner. Um, and you know that's resulted in the, what it's resulted in but I think that you guys could add a lot more excitement and, and meat to that. Now one of the things that I don't like about what we've done like between F and G is actually also in how you see us play. It looks, it doesn't look like we're like rah, like everything should be so intense there like so satisfying. <laughs> By the way, do you all 
I hope you're not. I, I don't know anybody that does that. Maybe there's lots of people that do, but not in the groups that we play in. <laughs> there not kind of how we've played it which is a little bit safe so if you can add some drama to that that would be great now here accent okay <coughs> let's see if i can actually do that fast it's really difficult because you want on the downbeat to play that full chord I hope you all have the right bowing for that. Makes a big difference. All of it comes and then up. Um, so if you could actually add an ac the accent that's there, we would be very grateful because I don't think in our recording there's much of an accent. Um, okay, what else could you do to make us sound amazing? <laughs> um... I think anything that is bringing solidarity to the sound of each section for the fugue will help. So just the more kind of clean and rhythmical you can be, it was really, really difficult to put this together. And bear in mind, we're putting this recording together at the same time as setting up the whole virtual session. So um, teensy bit of stress going on, just teensy bit. Uh, <laughs> but... Um... <laughs> Oh dear. Like I'm almost not moving. I'm like a little bit of a, a robot, like very kind of sticky. Um, and one general thing that I want to say to everybody is that if you're not sure of a place, but you want to send in the whole recording, just uh, leave it out. Like you can leave out six bars and just come in again. That's totally fine. In some ways, that's probably easier for us putting it all together than something that's very like like a few bars that are totally random notes <laughs> or random rhythm. Um, as much as we embrace all that, like we might might try to not include anything that's too random. Well, I don't. You know what? We'll probably include it. It's meant to be about all getting together. So forget that. I didn't say that. Never mind. Um, okay, so the end. Now, I spoke to you in the last um, tutorial about the place, the, the big descending thing after P uh, to letter Q. Um, but I want to just reiterate in the place leading up to P that I feel like, again, in, in concert or in rehearsal when we're physically together, we do this better than we did in the video, which is... So you want the sound to kind of almost yearn. It's like you're trying to get somewhere. I would really encourage you all to hardly use any vibrato there. So you want to feel like you're suddenly an accordion that's just pulling the sound. So you've gone from the, this sweetness. You're really pulling the sound. So we're reaching for that place. So um, this passage at Q, uh, do, you, do you want me just to play through that passage one more time before because of the intonation is really annoying? This is a waste of time. Just fast forward the next few minutes. Right, I'm playing from P. <laughs> Questionable fingering, but that's what I do. Find the emotion 
motion in the intervals. So you can feel and hear them. Um, just in case that was helpful, but when it gets to it, sing this place. Like if we don't hear it as, um, if we don't hear either melody or harmony there, and we're just kind of playing some strange progression, it makes it very, very difficult to um, tune and for it to sound good. Um, and then here, if you can bring ultimate excitement to us. Oh my goodness. I would I also feel like we're a little bit on the kind side with the sound like it's a little bit um, like if I was playing that in a concert it would be much more like just sparkly and those last notes like everyone question mark in case you're struggling with the fingering there Then one, two, two. And that's another place I think we could have had a little bit more grit in our sound. Like I actually, in concert, I never play that on the string or really controlled. Some, for some reason with those mics, um, as in the mic of my mobile phone, which is what we recorded it on, by the way. Um, I played it much more, like, not much more clean, but a bit more clean. Okay, so one thing that went round the table a few times was the idea of doing that more, um, releasing the sound a bit more. Oh, that was wrong notes. definition. One of the things that went around the houses a few times amongst us was to have a little bit more release in the stroke here. So we can hear when one voice fights against the other. And anyway, recording to this, it's pretty difficult to feel exactly where the tempo is. That place was really hard to record. And what we've ended up with, like, could it could be a lot better um it's just really tricky to do that um so i think if you can add rhythmic clarity to it don't play loud play really quite soft and just try to slot into the rhythm rather than getting carried away with your own sound but then when it gets to there you can get carried away with your sound and if you can if you can make sure those sing out as as much as possible, better than I just did. Um, uh, I guess the last thing for me is um, from is from T to the end. So these four bars of T, I would love extra percussion. Somehow, again, I I I was quite safe in the recording of that, but I would just go for it. Oh my goodness, you could do a ricochet. <laughs> um, to add some real good percussion there um, and then from this place could I would advise everybody to pad out the sound a bit more we're a little bit spiky we're a little bit safe so um, just to create a lot of resonance there um, and um, I think the most important thing for the end is that the sound is free. You always feel like you want to push down there. Keep the sound as free as possible and let it ring. So I would use plenty of bow. Don't worry about those notes. <laughs> worry about the notes. Don't worry about the dots. Um, and please, please enjoy yourself at the end. 
you got to the end. <laughs> Just please enjoy yourself and let us see that you're enjoying yourself. Um, and the last thing I want to say to you all, for all of you who are going to send in a video and haven't done yet, um, I haven't recorded it yet, how you appear matters. And I don't mean dress up or not dress up. I mean, um, if you look terrified and worried, we subconsciously hear a bit of that. So um, try as much as you can to sort of um, let go in your spirit and be taken with the pace and the music. If something you're uncomfortable with, like I said, it's okay to leave that out. It's no problem at all, things go wrong. Just do what you can and um, you will be part of a huge collective. And we can't wait to to integrate you all into our experience. So I hope this was somewhat helpful. Any questions put in the question box below, no, the comment box below. And again, I really apologize that this tutorial is a little on the late side. Love to everyone. Bye.